Okay, decision trees, part four. Now, I want to talk about the CART algorithm, which I, I spent a lot of time talking about C4.5, so I want to talk about CART. And um, before I do that, I, I just want to tell you um, something about its designer, Leo Breiman. So I, I had the good fortune to meet Leo Breiman, who's now one of my, I, my idols, right? I think, I think he's amazing. Um, and I actually got the good fortune to meet him when I was a graduate student. And I was giving a poster at a poster session at a conference. And uh, I was talking about Adaboost and I was studying Adaboost and its, its margins. And I was trying to turn Adaboost into a dynamical system and study its convergence properties and so on. And so I said, hey, you know, Dr. Brahman, I figured something out. Do you, do, you want to, do you want to see it? And he said, well, that's not what you're doing. It's, it's, you don't really need it. You can't really use it for anything. If, if you want a thesis, now, he's actually said, he said, I already figured that out. I already know the answer to this. Um, so if you want a thesis, you should study some this, uh, this other thing. And I was thinking, I already have a thesis. <laughs> but I, uh, well, anyway, it, it ended, it all worked out well. And I, you know, we ended up waving to each other at the end of the conference and so on and whatever. But um, yeah, I actually really do admire Leo Bryan. And he, um, he spent a long time in industry and came back and realized that we need tools that people can really use, like decision trees, right? He, that's, he came back from industry and designed all these methods that are super useful even today, like random forests and decision trees. So. Okay. Anyway, so CART, it does only binary splits. It doesn't do multi-way splits, which makes the splitting criteria simpler. It uses the Gini index for splitting, which I introduced in the last part of the lecture. But then the best part of this whole thing, the best part of CART, C4.5, in my opinion, is that minimum cost complexity criteria for pruning. Because this is the only thing in all of this stuff that actually makes sense to me. So for the minimum cost complexity pr uh, pruning, you assign each subtree a score, and that score looks like this. Okay, so it's a, it's a linear combination of the misclassification error and the sparsity. So it's a regularized risk functional. It's balancing accuracy against sparsity. So this to me makes a ton of sense, right? And so you wonder something like, well, why don't we just optimize this whole thing from the very beginning? And that's a good question. And that's what we actually do in the more modern decision tree methods. But back in 1984, that was not possible. So they just used it as a pruning criteria. Okay, so the way you can think about this is that because both of these two terms are counts, like they're discrete, then you can think of um, that every time you add a new leaf, that costs C units, right? C being the regularization parameter. So that means that each new leaf is worth the same thing as C misclassified points. Because if you're gonna add one leaf, you lose C. And if you're gonna add C misclassified points, you lose C. Okay, so um, that's classification trees, the CART for classification. Let's talk about CART for regression. Now for regression, we're gonna assign the predictions to be constant within each leaf. And then we'll choose the function value to minimize the squared loss within each leaf. Now, if you think about that carefully, what it ends up meaning is that you end up just taking the average of the labels within each leaf. So remember the labels here are real valued because we're doing regression. And so um, the squared loss looks like this. And if you are, um, so, so here we can just group the terms by leaf and then make the function constant within each leaf. So instead of calling it f of xi, I'll call it fj, where it's a constant within leaf j. Okay, so then what, what value would fj be? And it should be just the, value, the average of the y's within that leaf. Okay, so we call this um, the, the, the training error in leaf j for fj. And when you choose fj to minimize this thing, um, you end up getting the average. And I'll just show you that computation there. You can just take the derivative, set it equal to zero. And what you end up is that fj is just the average of the y's 
the average of the labels within that leaf. Okay, so then um, I just put my code up there for, for running. I, I, ran, I ran CART. Uh, I used one of the mat, standard MATLAB data sets and I, I ran CART and it gave me this tree which is kind of hard to understand written like that. So I told it to actually visualize the tree for me. Um, and it just printed this very pretty tree that CART produced from, remember this is splitting and then pruning using the class complexity pruning. Um, and the tree, the, the tree that it produced is really pretty. I had a lot of fun playing with it. Um, so I just, I visualized the data from two different angles and then I rotated the trees from two different angles. And you know, the trees are piecewise constant, which is why you're seeing these sort of horizontal bars everywhere. That's actually the, the leaves of the tree that you're seeing there. Okay, now for real valued features, um, so you, you're probably wondering, like these are, these are not categorical data, right? So how does it know where to split all these real valued features, right? X1, X2, how did it know where to split those? And um, it, actually, it actually optimizes those splits. Um, so it chooses, uh, for, for, for real valued features, it chooses the feature to split on and the split point. And then it chooses the values within the leaves, which are, I called here C1 and C2, but C1 and C2 are just the average of the labels within the leaves. Okay, so it's saying I'm gonna minimize over all choices of features, over all split points given those features of the total squared error. And then to get the total squared error, you have to consider what is the value in the leaf which is the minimizer of the squared loss, which again is just which again is just the average of the labels within the leaf. Okay, and then for regression, CART also does cost complexity pruning. Um, so here, the um, this is just the same cost complexity term that I had earlier, except for regression with the squared loss, and then again regularized by the number of leaves in the tree. Okay, so just to give you some perspective, um, we've learned several splitting and pruning procedures. We know how CART and C4.5 works, work. And so why are we studying decision trees again? And um, so first of all, if you, if you have a whole bunch of overfitted trees and you average them together in different ways, they actually produce amazingly powerful machine learning models. And so I'll talk about those in the next few lectures when we talk about random forests and boosted decision trees. And then also decision trees are interpretable. Well, I should say CART is, and C4.5 not so much. You have to do a lot of pruning on C4.5 because it tends to produce uninterpretable trees. But, um, you know, greedy though, it's not the only way to train an interpretable decision tree. And I'll talk in the next lecture about how to do it in a non-greedy way. But I should mention that there's some serious disadvantages to algorithms that train in a greedy way because like, for CART, for instance, if you adjust its imbalance parameter across the full range, it very often um, goes from predicting all positive to predicting all negative, and there's like no middle ground. Like you can't get any trees that are that are meaningful for for some imbalanced data sets. So, and, and that's all a function of just this the fact that you're doing greedy splitting and pruning. So, um, hopefully, you know, hopefully when we get Hopefully that'll help you appreciate when we get to the next lecture um, and we talk about some of the more modern methods for decision tree learning. Okay, thanks.